I'm concerned about going to college, about um, a access, wheelchair access. How will I go around campus? I'm just worried that I won't be able to understand my profession either in the class. When I take tests, teachers can't read my writing, so I need somebody to write the answers. Maybe to get extra time on tests, because I have to reread materials or the questions to make sure I understand what they're asking for. I'm concerned about the fact that I need an interpreter because without an interpreter it'll just completely go over my head. I'll be lost, I won't know what to do, and I'll just be lost. Sound familiar? College involves some extra challenges for students with disabilities. We'll show you how to succeed. So, you're thinking about going to college. Good, because if you want to do it, now is the time to plan. Get a good education and create your own job. Ask your high school counselor about transition to college programs. These students are participating in one called Do It Scholars at the University of Washington, where they're learning the ins and outs of campus life. Until you've got it firmly in your mind. The program teaches everything from study skills to applying for financial aid. And it includes information on adaptive technology, housing possibilities, and personal assistance for students with disabilities. The Do It program has helped me realize that college is possible. It's been the best experience of my life. Whether or not you find a transition program that works for you, you should call colleges or universities directly to ask about their orientation process and then start thinking about choices. Well, we tend to believe students should start looking at careers when they're in junior high. Um, and the reason for that is that the sooner the better. Because if they're going to go on to college or they're going to look at specific types of careers, they really need to take certain types of courses to be able to get into the university or the college setting. Even if you're already a senior, you can still get started. But do it now. It's time to get those college applications in, so think about which college would be best for you. Students will want to consider what types of programs the schools have to offer, what types of interests they have, what types of career choices they may have, and then take those things into consideration when you look at each individual school. Check out both academics and accommodations. Every college should have either a disabled student services office or at least a contact person to assist you. Call and ask questions. Try to go to the schools where you've applied and make sure you can really get around on campus. And find out what resources are available in the surrounding community. I think it would be really important if you're moving, if you're relocating to a different city to check into the resources available in that city. Here in Seattle, all of the metro buses are equipped with wheelchair lifts on the buses, but not every city has that yet. Once you've chosen a college, the next step is to go. There are a lot of high school students get scared and they're thinking, I can't do it. But I think anybody can do it. As long If you can make it through high school, it's just one step up. <laughs> I always think of it as you graduate, you're in 12th grade. It's just like the 13th grade. That's all it is for me. It isn't exactly like high school, though. As Monica found out, there are some new responsibilities to take on. You learn to be really responsible because when you're in high school, your teachers look after you a lot. They tell you what to do. They make sure you go home and do your homework. And whereas when you first come to college, you kind of feel as in your teachers don't care. But it's not really that. It's just that they put the responsibility on you. You know, this is my second year. I think that I've learned to be more responsible. I actually take time to study three hours a night, you know, and it pays off in the end. It also pays to ask for whatever help you may need. You should always be your own self-advocate. Just because you get to a big university like this, don't expect that everything's going to be ready for you, that every one of your problems has already been solved. You've got to be there and you've got to speak up for what it is that you need and make sure that you're heard because otherwise, if you just assume someone else has thought of it for you, then you're going to be left out. <laughs> when he only gets her schedule at the beginning of the quarter, she goes to each classroom and checks it out. Then, on the first day of class, she's ready. You have to get out there and you have to find out. They might not know. They might think, hey, this is a perfectly fine room, and then you go see it in your life. 
I can't get in there. <laughs> so you've got to check it out for yourself and you've got to make sure that you know what you need. Peony is able to choose her classes early through priority registration. In this way, she can schedule enough time between classes to get around. That's very important because it's up to you to be in class on time. You can see which times are most convenient for you and design your schedule to where you would like to be and what types of instructors you want to have and what buildings you want to meet in or whatever. And that's something that all students can do, disabled or otherwise. Hi, Tammy. Hey, Uni. Can I help you? Yeah, I just need to return this. Oh, okay. Be sure to work with the Disabled Student Services Office from the beginning. They'll let you know if you have to document your disability in order to receive services. Sure. And they'll help you get those services. There are standard accommodations such as um, books on tape, brailing, sign language interpreters, different things like that that a Disabled Student Services Office would be able to provide. Other types of accommodations that may be offered through the Disabled Thank Student you. Services Office are advocacy training um, to teach students how to work with their professors and request accommodations. Some schools oh, okay. offer classes in note taking or test taking anxiety or different things like that. Okay, part A for number one is meta chloral nitrobenzene. Separate testing can be arranged if you need to work with a scribe or if you need more time for your exams. And keep technology in mind. Takuya, a freshman, has found that his computer is essential. The computer can help me because it is, uh, it can check my grammar, uh, it can help me to understand how to write. It can help me how to spell out the one I do not know. And it also can give me some uh, word definition. Get to know your professor. It's one of the most important things you can do. It is really important for a student to develop good rapport with their professors because that person could potentially become a referral for a job or scholarships or different things like that. And so one thing that students should keep in mind is the way that they approach the professor, the way that they request accommodations, yeah. to make it a request and not a demand, and just to work together to come up with different accommodations. If your disability doesn't show, it may be even more important to explain things to your professors. For example, no one can see a learning disability. Or, in Monica's case, most people would never know she has impaired vision. So, she tells them. Teachers are really understanding. They understand what, when you tell them, and they, they make accommodations for you, and they try to help you out in the best way possible. So I just have found where you might feel embarrassed, they might treat you in a different way. Actually, it just turns out better. You get treated well. Other students, too, are usually very supportive. There's always somebody around to help you if you're having any problems. And I've found people here to be extremely courteous. All you have to do is ask them for help. Don't expect it, but if you ask them, they will help you. The Ten Commandments are not multiple choice. As a college student, you should think ahead. It's great to go to college just for the sake of knowledge. But most people want and need a career when they get out. Uh, Jennifer, can I talk to you for a second? Sure. Um, can you take this? Get a job on or off campus while you're in school. Volunteer for something. Try an internship. Any of these things will enhance your resume. I had an internship at Battelle, which was very valuable for me, and I learned a lot there. From the employers that I talk with, I would say there's three things that they look at. One thing that there's a very important thing is work experience. So in that sense, students should try to look at internships or volunteer experiences while they're in college. The second thing is leadership experiences, and that's where being involved in student organizations, um, doing projects that are out of the, the norm, out of the classroom, are real important. And then I think the third one is grades. And not that you have to be a 4.0 student, but you definitely have to be at least a 3.0 or better. And in some cases, a 3.5 is very important for especially research type companies or sciences, the sciences fields. Check out the Career Center on campus for ideas. And before you actually choose a major, think about what you like to do. 
Try to see yourself in that career. Assess your qualifications. It's incumbent upon, I think, the applicants to, to do some self-assessment uh, about that, to, to get an understanding of uh, what it is they like to do, um, what their limitations are in, in working, uh, and how those uh, needs and wants and limitations all sort of mix together and come into uh, this professional arena. The last thing to remember is, have fun. I think social life is a big part of college and to make sure I have one, I'll spend a lot of time doing work, but I'll always allow like an hour or something just to socialize. Everyone's trying to make connections with everybody else instead of trying to stay with their own little clique that they were in when they were in school. Peony came from a small town to a large urban university. She chose dorm living as a way to meet new people. If I lived off campus in a little apartment, then I would only come here for the classes and I would miss out on all these other extracurricular activities that you hear about just because you're here in the dorm. So it just facilitates a lot of great friendships and a lot of wonderful opportunities for social interaction. After all this, do you still have a few little twinges of fear? Just a small lack of confidence at the thought of college? Well, don't worry, you're not alone and you'll get over it. Even just your first quarter semester is going to be really tough because, but I would just say don't give up because I know my first quarter was hard because not only with, there's, our, there's already the hardship of your disability, which is, you know, which kind of maybe so much brings you down and you're thinking, oh, I can't keep up and everything, but more so it's just adjusting to the college life and I, my thing is just that stick with it because I know my first quarter I thought, College is not for me, I'm dropping out. <laughs> and now look at me, I think I'm gonna go on into accounting and everything and even thinking of coming back to my master's. So I just say, my thing would just be, just stick with it, it does get better. For more information, contact Do It. On the World Wide Web, www.washington.edu slash doit. Phone, voice, or TTY, Area code 206-685-DOIT. Address, do it. University of Washington, Box 355-670, Seattle, Washington, 98195-5670. Director, Cheryl Bergstaller. The creation of this videotape was made possible as part of Project Do It by a grant from the National Science Foundation. The University of Washington Computing and Communications and the College of Engineering also contributed resources to this project. Copyright 2007 and 1996, University of Washington. Last year, for the first time, Greg Buell lived on his own. He started classes at Seattle Pacific University, moving here from his parents' home in eastern Washington. A big step, but not as far as he might have gone. The main reason I liked here is because it was closer to home. I was looking at a school that my brother went to in Southern California, but that was just too far away. I wanted to come home on three-day weekends if I wanted to. Greg wasn't new to college life. He'd already earned an associate degree from Columbia Basin College, knowing that he'd transfer eventually to a four-year university. The two years he spent at community college made it financially possible to continue at a private school of his choice. The big thing for me is the financial aspect of it, is I can't afford four years of $20,000 a year. I don't have that kind of money. Okay. So to do two years at a local institution where you have free rent, free housing, free food, if you're living with your parents. Uh, to, to do that was a major thing. For many students, community college is a great way to start. Besides lower tuition, the smaller class size is a big advantage. I know that we tend to give our students a lot of individual attention. Our faculty know our students, for the most part, I think, on a personal basis, and they're willing to listen to 
you know, situational stories that come up in people's lives and accommodation arrangements are done fairly quickly and without too much fanfare. For some careers, a two-year degree is all that's needed, making community college an end in itself. But if you're looking toward a bachelor's degree or beyond, you need to start making plans now. I think the moment they step in the door on campus, they should be thinking about, what, why am I here? What are my short-term goals? What are my long-term goals? And in that process of thinking about it, they could then begin to look for classes that will point them in that direction. Determine the prerequisites you'll need for your major. Then make sure you're taking the right mix of classes for the most effective transfer. For example, you'll need a heavier math and science load for an engineering degree than for journalism. Start by mapping your path. What careers are you considering? Do you need a technical or two-year degree? Or do you need at least four years? Will graduate school be necessary? Will your career be both challenging and rewarding? Well, you want to look at yourself. What are your values? What are the things that make up you as a person? Your likes, your dislikes. And then you begin to look at occupations. And then you try to make a match. Check out the career services or career counseling office on your campus. Besides career ideas, they may offer aptitude or interest tests to see how you compare to people who are successful in various professions. The sooner you're able to focus on what you really want, the better you'll be able to plan. It's just as important to spend as much time researching what you're going to do as far as your employment than it, it is to research your, the college you're going to go to. So it, it certainly um, helps to spend some time getting really a good idea of what kinds of employment, what kind of skills and gifts each of you, you know, that you have so that you can um, look for a job that you really want to do. Next, choose the best college or university for you. Do the school's academic strengths match your goals? Does class size matter? Location? Expense? Or maybe the overall feel of the school is most important to you. That was a big factor for Greg in choosing Seattle Pacific University. Actually, my brother's best friend went here uh, two years before I came. And so I talked to him a lot and came over here a couple times and visited and did the tour thing with the staff here. And just really like the atmosphere. Of, it's a real friendly atmosphere and I love the campus settings. If you have a disability, it's critical to visit the college. Can you get around on campus? Check out the library, dining areas, and other student facilities. Can you use them? If you'll be living in a dorm, will the university take care of any accommodations you may need? Some accommodations are clearly mandated by law, but other accommodations vary depending on the institution. So it's really important for a student to go to the schools that they're thinking about attending and talk with the Disabled Student Services Office to see what types of accommodations they would be able to receive at that institution. Hi Greg, how are you? Doing good. good. One of your first contacts on campus should be the Disabled Student Services Office or the staff person assigned to provide accommodations. They'll make sure you have the right documentation, help arrange accommodations, and act as a support system. And since the Disabled Student Services Coordinators are there to really serve you and to try to make your, ex your educational experiences as good as the institution wants it to be, um, they can be one of the, your best allies on any campus. They can also be advocates for students who are having difficulties. But don't wait until you're in real trouble before making the first contact. One of the things that um, I want to stress sure, that's, that's critical <laughs> is for students with disabilities to come and use our services early in the process. And then, from the beginning, I'm in a better position to advocate strongly, particularly if they come in on a regular basis so I know what's going on. I am Dr. Price, and this is Marriage and Family, so if you're not in the right class, leave now. You also have to be an advocate for yourself, especially when it comes to requesting accommodations. You're the expert on your own disability. For classrooms, the only thing I need is to have a smaller desk that's maybe a foot and a half off the ground. It kind of slants at an angle. So I just sit in a normal chair and have that desk just on the floor. So that's where I do my writing. That's the only adaptation I need in the uh, classroom. If your disability isn't obvious, professors may not realize that you have one or know how to accommodate you unless you tell them. A pre-class introduction helps to develop a rapport and to smooth obstacles in advance.
Our Disabled Student Services Office writes a letter for each student that receives services through our program. It's directed to the professor, it talks about the fact that they've met with me and I've reviewed their documentation, and then it lists out all the appropriate accommodations for that student. And basically the student takes the letter to the professor and sits down and discusses the accommodations one-on-one. -on -one. Besides academics and accommodations, consider these other areas of concern when choosing a university. Computer access, library support services, tutoring, financial aid, climate, transportation, housing, dining, child care, and social organizations. The internet, the admissions office, and other students are all sources of information. Then, once you've chosen a four-year school, you actually have to go there. The transition can be a little scary. I was concerned about it just because with the disability and moving into a new place and there's not always the same people around to help you that you need help from sometimes. I think it was a transition for me, but after going through it, I don't think there was any big reason for that kind of fear that I may have had. Ask ahead of time if there are transition programs available. Sometimes freshman Hi. orientation doesn't include transfer students. The expectations are different. I think professors and, and four-year institutions kind of expect since that you, you've had two years of college level experience on your, on your belt, that um, you already know what's kind of expected in the classroom, that they can assume that you know what a syllabus is and how to follow it, how to get around the campus, and that you're going to be pretty self-aware enough to, to go find the bookstore, and do all the stuff without as much orientation as, say, a freshman coming in who may or may not have had college level work at all. In other words, you're expected to plunge right in. You're also only two years from graduation, so you really have to start planning for employment. Look into internships as soon as possible. The Career Services Office on campus can help you. We feel as though internships are the best place for a student to explore career opportunities. And the more that they can articulate their skills and their worth, the better prepared they're going to be to choose different types of careers that might be their best fit. For students with disabilities, there are some added benefits. So, the student with a disability it, has to also think about issues like how do I disclose my disability to a potential employer? Um, what accommodations do I need on the job? Where do I get those accommodations? How much do they cost? Those types of things that uh, the typical student might not have to think about, but the student with a disability not only has to think about, but feel very comfortable in portraying that to an employer. And internships can give a student an opportunity to practice that, not once, but several times with several different people. You can also learn what you don't like about a particular career, as Greg did in his summer public relations job. The great experience of PR, just learning how to do things was a great experience, how to do the focus sheets and news releases and video kind of things, but also realizing that there are some things that you have to look at in PR that aren't so glamorous. Greg knows where he's going. The step from a two-year to a four-year college was right for him. He made a plan for success, and you can too. Map your path, choose your schools, plan your transition, and make the best choices for you. Which schools are going to help me to cultivate those skills and those gifts that I have so that I can best use them in the workforce someplace? For more information, contact Do It. On the World Wide Web, www.washington.edu slash doit phone voice or tty area code 206-685-DOIT address do it university of washington box 355-670 seattle washington 98195-5670 director cheryl bergstaller the creation of this videotape was made possible by a grant from the Fund for the Improvement of Post-Secondary Education, U.S. Department of Education. The University of Washington College of Engineering and Computing and Communications also contributed resources to this project. Copyright 1998, University of Washington. Disabilities. Opportunities. Internetworking. Technology. That's do it. Do It makes me feel like it really can happen, like nothing can stop now. At Do It, we're all about success. Being independent is something that's really important to me. It's like you actually did it by yourself, yay! Success in college. I want to study. 
computer science. I learned like how to do a web page. Success in careers. I'm really interested in technology and engineering. Success in life. Making friends is really big. You don't feel alone here, you feel equal, no matter what. Do It programs are made possible by the National Science Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, and the State of Washington. We're also supported by generous gifts from corporations and individuals. You'll learn so much and you'll love it. To support Do It, call 206-685-DOIT or check out our website at www.washington.edu slash DOIT or write to us at DOIT, University of Washington, Box 355670, Seattle, Washington, 98195-5670. Director Cheryl Bergstaller.